Python is one of the most popular languages available out there to learn. It continues to grow and on the TOB index it still ranks 1 even a year later compared to last year February 2023. Python's popularity over the years has just kept on growing. This blue line here just shows you how much it's grown over, over the past few decades and how it's overtaken popular languages like C, leaving classic languages like Java in behind becoming less popular. So with its ease of use, does it make for an ideal game development language? Well, we'll look over some of the issues and some of the advantages Python has over traditional languages like C and even traditional game engines like Unity or Unreal Engine. We'll go over one of the glaring issues is Python speed. If anyone talks about one of the disadvantages of Python is that it's just very slow when compared to its counterparts like C, specifically C++. And C++ is a very popular language used in game development because for, of its fast speed. Now, what's also interesting is uh, because of this, it's a very non-eco-friendly language because of all the extra processing time it has to do. And we can see that Python is just barely, barely better than Perl, and it makes it one of the most inefficient languages, really, when you're trying to do the same sort of algorithm. And looking at the original data set, we can see how inefficient Python is, always appearing at the bottom, lowest, one of the lowest of binary trees. The DP benchmark is just a pathetic compared to C. So why is it that Python is just so popular despite it being inferior in speed and efficiently compared to its counterparts? Well it's its package ecosystem is so amazing. There are 500,000 projects available for you to just simply pip install and then import it in and really that's it you're done. Some may require extra dependencies outside of Python that require a certain driver for example, PyTorch, if you're using your NVIDIA graphics card, you will need CUDA installed outside of it. And some of these packages are just simply fantastic, like SciPy, Bureau of Data Science, handling and manipulating the data is so useful and so easy with this application. Like if I have a set of data points and I want to generate a nice curve or estimate my approximation I can with stuff like Cubic Spline, and it even gives me a nice example, and it creates this nice curves here. It also tells me the other packages used, such as matplotlib, where you can just plot your data. Very easy and very simple. As you can see that just this small piece of code is able to do this. Languages like C would take a lot more effort, requiring you to render the graph and then interpret the data and then plot it like this. Rather than Python, it's just so easy to do so. Making doing data science and AI so much fundamentally easier because you're not really you don't really care about the speed, you don't care if it's if it's slightly slower when something like this isn't going to really have an ex effect on the speed like it might be point something slower and so the idea of using Python as a game programming language isn't actually that far-fetched and there are all the libraries out there great that are fantastic and make the development pretty easy like Pygame this is a community edition and uh, really something's broken with this website but that's fine and you can see that there are games made here such as that this one which looks fantastic available on Steam so people have gone out of their way and publish them and because it's python it's very simple to install and should work on really any operating system that supports python you can see you just have to pip, simply pip install the package and then you're ready to go just import it set up the initials and then have your while loop the game loop and then you can put everything in here where you put where you put all your game states another great one is raylib which is a small game library as well and this is written c but it has plenty of bindings and python being one of them and once again, it's just a simple state of pip install, and then you just import it and you create the game loop window. Now, the speed situation does get a bit scary when you do start using these. We can see that the Raylibs version 3.7 in its implementation in C can do 168,100 bunnies at 60 frames per second, but its Python version, the binding, is pathetically slow at its 33,800 which is only 20% fast as the base level and this is using PyPy so if you're using Python just a normal Python you'll get even slower results and this is because these languages are actually they're communicating to C and that's a very costly process which is why the performance is so low so if you're trying to do anything that's very intensive that requires a lot of sprites and a lot of processing which you may see a dip in your performance but if you're doing smaller applications and games that don't require those quick action, you should be really good at this. And the conversation of performance is always just brought up and the fluffy potato is clearly an expert in Pygame as they have a lot of experience within this. This is their whole channel is based on using Python in game development. 
and they go over the performance issues and how you can sort of mitigate them you will never be as fast as c because you're just calling to c so there is the idea of why don't i just program in c well we'll look at raylib and we'll see the basic window just a simple thing that you need to open a window pair it to its python version so you need to include its header then you need to declare the main set the constants initiate a window set a target then do the while the beginner drawing and then you have to return a zero while python's version is simply this so much smaller so much neater so much easier to read you don't need the little curly braces and you don't need the semicolons at the end of each line which will throw errors at you making a game in this language you get access to the huge package ecosystem and you get the ease, ease of use of its pythonic implementation the way the code it reads and it just it'll be easy to understand on something like c and it kind of it's just the code is far more human readable while the performance is a fraction it's still good you know 33,000 sprites or at the worst case you know 6,000 still a lot and if you're not doing anything super intensive like i said before you'll be perfectly fine you maybe never see that hit in performance it still might even be faster than other programming uh, game engines sorry like Godot or Unity++ plus plus, but just because you have that more control over how you create the variables, how you deal with them, how you clear them and such. Python style, the Pythonic implementation is definitely leaking into other languages. Uh, GDScript is not, it says it's not based on Python. The kind of like code structure and the readability does seem a lot like it. The way you create a function has the code on at the end, you don't need to have the curly braces. And just in general when it comes to declaring variables and such are kind of fam familiar to Python, you don't have to declare what type it is, but you can choose to do so to make it clear and to prevent other people or whatever from writing incorrect data, which can cause problems later down the line. But Godot is actually this really good gap as well. It's uh, You don't have to deal with C Sharp or C++. You can choose sudo to gain this bit of performance game. Godot is really, great thing is because of GScript, GScript is, is really good and it is really easy to get into with its node structure as well you're not dealing with all the game while loops that are present within high game or raylib which are great ways of i think of learning sort of game structure and optimization you have to figure out where to put your state you have to create a state unlike godot which sort of handles yourself so you can make more mistakes in godot as opposed to something like a traditional just raw program language of a little library and i myself have been working with python for some little upcoming video little project and the structure of the code is so easy and nice to read and what i really love about python is just its package ecosystem is the implementation available to use data science related package or creating games so i've been using scipy in my here to generate convex cells i've also just got a package for bezier curves i have to implement myself and i have one for Perlin noise so i can create a noise noise uh, terrain and, and also numpy is also fantastic as well for structuring the arrays organizing arrays they got dictionaries which are just so useful python does struggle i think when you scale a project up it doesn't show errors until it reaches it unlike something like c or c plus plus it won't compile it will say this won't work because of this error found on this line while with python a lot of the time it will run and it, that error will be thrown once you hit that issue. This is not great if you're building a game and you've got multiple classes, multiple nested classes even, and all these different functions, and you've got this big game and then you're playing it an hour in and it crashes because there's a, some little bug you found later on in the code that's only just been ran this one time in a specific scenario. That's a sacrifice you have to sort of make when it comes to having an application that you Easter made without the cost of performance and some of the other issues. Python can run easy because it isn't doing all this compiling. You just have to do Python, then the name of the file, and it will run. That's it, very quick, very easy, very great, great for prototyping. But if you're looking to build serious applications, big ones, it can become a struggle because those errors may pop up way later down the line and you don't realize it. You may also think, oh, engines have all these juicy features available which you know python won't raylib doesn't have all these issues in fact the cheat sheet can be fit in just this one page that's that's the whole thing which is great because it makes it small but with other engines you obviously have the collision you have the tile maps you have this all pre-prepared while on something like this was not prepared it just kind of gives you here's your basics that you can use to make a game library it's small it's very efficient though 
uh, but here's how you can render this, 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 and then you can just fill out all the functionality into it, which is actually really great for a learning point. But Python is just so rich with packages that you can just find them yourself. PyPy, you can c calculate the collisions with this. This is this would make it so much easier. I already showed you that I had Perla noise, NumPy for organizing some of the arrays. You have the pandas package for reading and outputting data, so you can do a sorting on your data if you have, if you need to. You can then obviously read all these different file formats so easily for your game. So if you have, for example, a tile map and you store in a CSV, you can read it and then just insert it in. Life is just so well documented as well. Pretty much if you search for any issue, it will be coded in Python for you to learn. If I want to know how to do a tile map, I can just search Python tile map. And when I load it, oh look, here we go, tutorial documentation. I do collision. There we go again, chapter 19, Collision Tension, Invent with Python. Collision detect Detection in Pygame, it's everywhere. It's you, specifically when it comes to complex issues like trigonometry and other complex maths, I can almost guarantee you that the implementation or the tutorial is going to be written in Python. It's such an easy way to explain it to the user. Trying to use C++ and then having this big code where you're declaring a variable, reference a variable, and clearing the variable, and then all the curly braces on top of that. While Python, it's very easy and readable making it a good teaching tool as well and you'll find a lot of implementations written in python great for you if you're looking to make a game another more minor thing and new thing is when it comes to large language models python is a very popular language so you can guarantee it's going to be trained within a data set and it has and here's one of the more new ones which is called stable code which is a 3 billion parameter model and it's kind of an optimized version of the code llama 7b so it's it's 2.5 five times smaller in this case and something like this you can actually run this locally on your computer you only need like a gtx 1060 because it is so small and so efficient and one of the main languages it learned on was python it's, it's pretty good on python it matches the 7 billion parameter model if that's not enough then you can go to extreme measures and use meta's code llama and they recently released a 70 billion parameter model as we can see here and you can even get a one specific for Python. you can see you need a lot of memory though 39 gigabytes it takes here just to have it i don't know how much it'll be when running it but it's gonna be huge but you could probably ask it anything and it'll give you a really good answer so if you're someone who is very familiar with python but aren't too sure to, to get into game development then i python and it's pi game or raylib old Libraries might be a good starting point. They get you familiar with the structure of how a game works. You're familiar with the architecture, obviously, with the Python coding. And you have that access to the huge package repository, the ecosystem. So you can make use of very cool features with a very little amount of lines of code. The performance may be undesirable in certain cases, such as if you're trying to do a bullet hell IE where there's so many sprites on the screen at once, you're trying to handle the calculations. Maybe you might want to switch to something like C, a very fast language if you're looking to do so, or just back to a more traditional game engine. But with its ease of access and how quickly you can quickly do prototypes, it may be a place to do some small projects to get the idea, get the feel for it. It'd also be a great place just to learn to program in general. I think previously I might have said, oh, you should start with C to learn a language. But Python's just so popular, everyone uses Python nowadays, that you may as well just start with Python, and then if you need to switch to C, start learning C. I don't think I don't see Python changing from the top spot anytime soon. I also I do think C and C will just remain at the top, while other languages like Java will probably continue to taper off. Just because it's just not really a language you want to use. It's very awkward nowadays when you can just do the same thing in Python or the sacrifice of a bit of slower speed. But you know, if you're hosting a web server, the speed ain't gonna be too much of a big deal. So do you program in Python and make games in Python or are you are someone that's looking into learning to program Python or even then you're someone who's working on an engine and thinking of trying something different and do comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.